Hello and welcome back to my EMC ESI High Availability Extension for Exchange Webcast. Uh, right now I'm going to focus on how easy it is to create a local and remotely replicated database. So again we are using our ESI MMC. Um, we focus on mailbox databases um, and just say create mailbox database. Create mailbox database um, will ask me for the database servers in my database availability group. Um, as you remember, I have an even and an odd side and right now I'm going to create a database on the even side, which is my remote side and replicate it back to the odd side. Um, I will name this database REEDB2 um, and it should have a disk size of 500 gigabytes and it should get a drive letter of J um, and the logs, they will get a drive letter of K. So ESI also takes care for free drive letters. So we also look if there's a drive letter free. Um, I click on the next button. And um, again, I get asked um, which storage array I want to use. I re use the remote storage array. Right now, there's only a database created without any replication. So um, here's the last check. Is my host um, able of seeing the storage? Yes, he's logged in and registered. Um, so I just create the database, uh, create the LUNs. So the LUNs get created on the storage array. Um, I bring the LUNs online at the server, initialize the drives, format them, and then just create an exchange database and bring the database online. So this takes uh, a few seconds. Um, the creation of the LAN itself is a really fast progress since we are using send provisioning and um, um, this is a pretty, pretty fast thing. Um, then we rescan the LANs on the host. It could take um, a few seconds because we have to, to rescan also the multi-passing information and we have to do it for each and every disk. And when we identified the disk, it's getting provisioned and mounted um, to the host itself. Um, when we have done this for the database volume, we would do the same for the log volume. Um, for the rescanning process itself, um, we are using the virtual disk service remote, so um, sometimes the virtual, virtual disk service might hang on servers. Um, then we restart the virtual disk service um, and also try multiple times to, to connect to the server. Um, right now he's provisioning the volume, that means he's formatting it um, and at the end he's mounting it and then we are doing the same for the log volume. Uh, once the log volume is created on the array, we're also going to unblock it to, to the host. So um, we can rescan the disk drives on the host. As you can see, the storage portion is much more faster than actually creating the stuff on the Windows host. But um, again, if you are going to automate this with the underlying PowerShell commands, it is just a workflow that runs through and, and once it's done, it's done and your database is mounted. So here we are creating a database on the VNX um, with logs on the VNX. Um, they are currently not replicated. What I'm going to do in the second step, once this is um, done, it's pretty similar to Exchange. Um, when the database is mounted, I, crea I create a mailbox database copy. So the first thing is always create a mailbox database and then go out and create the mailbox database copy. There are two versions of database copies that I can create then. I can create a local copy and I can create a remote copy. When I create the remote copy, the copy is created on the remote array by using the underlying replication technology. Um, in this case, it's um, EMC recover point. So we will use recover point to replicate to the remote side. So right now we are in the progress of mounting the database. Um, it's right now in Active Directory and in the Exchange Manager. Um, so if we finish this here and um, let me see if I've still, yeah, there's an open instance of, um, of my Exchange Admin Console. Um, if we do a refresh here, we should have an REEDB2 and it's currently mounted on HV2013 REE2. 
So it's pretty similar. Um, it's just dragged into this um, Exchange admin console. So now let's flip back um, to the to the system. If we go to the REEDB2 database, we can see there is only one database copy available for this database. What we can do right now is we can go out and add a mailbox database copy. Now, um, I have multiple possibilities. I can create the database copy on my even service or on my odd service. And I can select the um, activation preference, however I want to have those um, things activated. Um, the activation preference um, is only allowed for the number of copies I currently have. So for the first thing, um, I would say we create a mailbox database copy on my local node. That means um, it's replicated to the same server on the same array by just mounting um, the database volumes and so it gets the activation preference number two. Um, it's logged in, it's registered, so we test the same for the server REE4. Um, and again, a summary, what needs to be done, a source copy storage serial number, um, where we have to go to, um, and we say go. The LAN gets unblocked. It gets rescanned on the other host since it's already formatted. Um, it only must be taken to the cluster and then we have added the mailbox database copy. As I explained in my further web, in my, in my previous webcast, we are just using an extension to, to the cluster that's um, running underneath um, um, or un behind the curtains of the database availability group and we use this for swapping over the, the LUNs between the local servers. So once that's done and the host um, sees both disk drives for logs and data, um, we add the mailbox database copy to exchange and then we have two copies of the data in, in terms of the database availability group by sitting just on one LAN without any data being copied from A to B. So if we go back into our Exchange Management Console, sorry, Exchange Administ uh, Exchange Control Panel, and do a refresh here again, I hit the refresh button, we should now have um, two servers, HVREE2 and H um, HVREE4 um, as servers for this mailbox database copy currently mounted on REE2. So this was for my local replication. Um, next thing is, if we want to do a remote replication, we have to configure volumes on the remote array and we have to set up the underlying replication um, software, which is normally configuring recover point consistency groups and all that stuff. This is completely done for you by using the integration of EMC's ESI. So we again go to our mailbox database and say we want to add a mailbox database copy. By now selecting a server on the remote array and having um, the high availability extensions knowing that this server connects to the remote array replicated with recover point, it knows what to do. There has to be a production journal to be created. This is for journaling the IOs locally and remotely. Um, it selects a replica node and we can select between synchronous and asynchronous replication. So if you have a distance solution, um, you can uh, use um, asynchronous replication, which saves uh, a lot of IOs for you. We can select the replication cluster that we want to use and the remote side, as I said, um, I replicate from the even side to the odd side, I, re I replicate to the C side and I'm coming from my D side. Um, we are using the um, VNX 5300D for the for the local journal and for the remote we are using the VNX 5300C that gets automatically detected. Um, the system will create the LUNs. We select a pool for the LUN um, as well for, as for the for the journal storage. Um, normally, um, you might select different pools for journal and production volumes. Since this is a demo, I put it all in the same one. Um, and also, he's detecting OK. Um, the host can see the remote array and he's logged in. Everything's fine. Um, just a short summary of what needs to be done. Now, before we hit the OK button, let me again bring the recover point UI to the front. 
you put it in here and you will see very soon a new um, uh, a new consistency group coming up so I first hit the next button and we see here there's a new um, consistency group being created um, right now there's happening some stuff behind the curtains we are adding so-called replica copies for local and remote within that process we need to create um, also LUNs, the journal LUNs and all that stuff. Once we have done this, um, uh, we can then later on add in our production volumes. So this takes a while and um, I make this a little bit larger. You see right now we have already created the production side with the production um, journals um, and we are going to add each and every replica set for logs and data for remote and um, the production volumes. So this is a process, it may take a while um, and since we are trying to do this uncut I just leave this um, working for a while. Um, while this is running I will show you something different from our other replication. Um, as we can see in the remote replica window, um, this is something I've um, not shown you in the, the earlier session. There's the journal and the journal keeps track of all the IOs um, that are going to the system. Um, and it tells us about the changes that we have. So um, for each and every IO that's going across the line, we are essentially tracking those changes. What we can do here as well is we can create consistent bookmarks. Um, that means um, if we do like for instance a VSS backup, we track this change in here. And once this change is tracked, we can always fail over to this consistent bookmark if we like to. Or we can restore the production from that copy. So um, there's pretty much stuff possible with this technology um, by just doing something that's called CDP continuous data protection. And I'll flip back to let's flip back to our um, newly created consistency group. Uh, I know that this takes a while right now, um, but that's the process of um, creating a consistent replica between both sides. But when, once this is set up, the replication itself is pretty fast and um, pretty much faster than what you could expect by replicating exchange databases with the exchange replication service across your replication network. So since we can use dedicated fiber channel here or asynchronous replication for remote side, that's a pretty, pretty uh, efficient process since we also compress the data that we send across the lines. Now we already have set up the production and um, remote um, copies and have also set up the replica sets. So we can look into the replication sets that we have. We will add volumes later on. So the database is already in, it's getting created. Um, the remote isn't available right now. It will be added soon. And once we've done this, we do the same for the lock. Um, and once the status is green, um, we are finished with, with this one. So I'm not speeding up this year <laughs> um, because I'm not doing a cheap trick. Um, it's running live and unplugged. So the um, replication of the database volume is right now ongoing. Um, as you can see from, from my existing we have to do the same for the locks. So um, the next thing that we will add is is, is the replica for the for the lock. Um, and, and once this is in, um, we are finished with creating the consistency group. Doing this manually normally um, would be some clicks in the UI, but there's also an integration into the ESI that allows me for manual create those consistency groups within ESI or within PowerShell. So everything is possible. 
Um, but in terms of, again, a workflow, we would do this normally automatically um, through our integration. As you can see here, the logs replica set right now is being created. Um, there's currently no production LAN in um, and no remote LAN in. So it's, uh, we have to put in the production LAN that we already have and configure in a new LAN from the remote array. Once this is done, um, we just enable the replica copy and the last step would be um, setting LAN access for the server on the remote side. So whenever we activate this copy, the remote server can access the data on that disk. So it must be a little bit faster for the log LAN since this is only a hundred gig LAN, um, but it's only limited due to the fact that we are replicating here the data. Um, while this is running, um, there's some stuff like link policies and group policies that we could configure. Um, like um, asynchronous or synchronous mode and we could some, set some dynamic by latency or dynamic by throughput. That means we can um, effectively um, utilize our replication links between both sides. So this is, this is an addition that we have and we, we could do something like snapshot um, consolidation. That means we journal each and every IO to the drive uh, to, that are going down to the LUNs and we can go back to each and every point in time. Now, once we've captured an amount of, let's say like a week, we can consolidate the change data of a week into a single snapshot. This is what we call snapshot consolidation. So then that we then have um, consistent points for each and every week. So this is something that could be automated within uh, recover point itself. So the replication right now is initializing. So we are, done with setting up the replica right now we are in the unmasking process that means the host gets to see his LUNs and once this is done um, we add the mailbox database copy that means we're creating the mailbox database copy officially <laughs> let's put it that way in exchange so once we go back to the exchange admin UI we can see this database has been created after we do a refresh. So we right now have a database copy sitting on our server HVE 2013 REE1 uh, and also on both even servers, um, which is the production side for this database. Um, yeah, the next thing that we could do, um, we might want to test um, if this failover stuff works. So we might want to activate the database um, on the newly created server with the activation preference of three. Um, we are in a synchronized state of the database right now. So what we just do is, um, we, as, as in the um, previous examples, we just say activate mailbox database copy. It doesn't work. Um, it says to me, it may need a refresh. And this is something that I explained to you in, in the earlier session. Once we do this settings to the um, exchange environment, we eventually need to update the exchange high availability extension, which means on every individual node of the cluster, we introduce that new storage configuration that we have. And we all only need to do this if we do changes in the storage configuration. Um, it takes a while. While we are upgrading this information, um, we are just um, disable the failover of the whole da database availability group. We check for the active manager. We refresh the active manager information. And once this is done, we are ready to do the database failover. So this, this will take a few seconds, not minutes, uh, a few seconds um, in my case. Um, and once it's done, we, we just go back to, to the failover or activation window and activate this remote database, which is doing the recover point failover um, behind the curtains. So the refresh is still working. 
it's not seconds, it's minutes. <laughs> so the last time I did it in my environment, it was just a few seconds, but um, yeah. Okay, and now we are going back and enable the high availability extension and we have enabled database failover again for the database availability group and now we have that information. If we go back to the databases and again click activate mailbox database and say next, next, click on more information talks to the primary active manager, he's taking down the cluster resource, resource group. Once the cluster resource group is down, we are doing the remote failover. That's why he needed to um, update his database configuration. Uh, once the failover is done, um, like here you see the locked access is already in, swapping the production the database gets mounted, remounting the image is in progress, and then we are on the remote side, which in this case um, is our uh, odd side. So REDB2, which is normally um, in production on the even side, is now on the odd side. We've refreshed the overall information on the whole cluster. Um, and once this is done, we are back in our UI, so we have the the complete updated information of this database availability group in terms of disk drives and and LAN information. However, the database is already acti active and running on on my node one. So the last thing that we might want to do right now is once we have established three copies. We also might to add a fourth copy on the remote side. And this is something that you could dynamically do. So you're working with two copies on your primary side. Um, if a disaster happens, your primary side is not available and you only have one copy on the remote side. Um, imagine what you would do if you have like 100 databases, each are two terabytes in size. You need to have a lot of capacity and a lot of time to replicate them to another copy to get back to high availability. Not so with the exchange high availability extension. You just go onto the database and tell you want to add another mailbox database copy and this mailbox database copy again is a local copy on the remote side which is only sharing the drives between two servers so I put it on um, HVE 2013 REE3 activation preference is 4 and this one is currently connected it has access to the underlying array short summary no replication needing to, uh, um, needing to be configured because it's already in we only need to configure the access to the remote LAN once the access to the remote LAN is done we add the mailbox database copy and then it will be available in exchange in the exchange control panel and we are finished with creating a remote a replica or a second replica on our remote side. So imagine the benefits that you have. You can run with three servers normally. You have HA on your local side. If something goes bad you switch over to the remote side. You are sitting on one remote server um, and if production needs to stay longer on the remote side you just fire up a new exchange server and connect it to the database availability group and then add a da mailbox database copy and there is no need to replicate the data because you just share the disk drives and you have high availability in your remote site which normally would cause you to replicate all the data to another storage. So rescanning the disks again, this is something on the host side to make sure we have that drive. We add the mailbox database copy, finish we are. Um, if we go to our exchange control panel again, we have to refresh this again. And you see here it's replicated the database across all four servers. So we have now a replication to all four servers.